Hello there everyone and welcome back to Equestrian War, I'm your host, the Lunar Empire level, but we gotta talk about the prisoners of war. After the war, there are tens of thousands of Solaris militants in our camps, and the time has come to address the issue of what to do with them. They fought against her majesty and spilled the blood of her subjects, yet having them sit around and rot will serve no purpose and instead only be a liability for us. Also, this is the focus as well from it, so if you want to read this again, please go ahead too. But, some have suggested that we just let them go. The war is over and Her Majesty's future is secure. They were on the wrong side of the conflict, but if they are allowed back to their families and homes, they will serve the Empress through their labor and the families they raised. Some on this side are hesitant to merely let them go and claim that their freedom should be on the condition that they renounce their loyalty to Akarastria. The more fervent of Her Majesty's servants say this would dishonor the memory of those who fell against the Solarists, and that only Solarists who wishes for the freedom owes a debt of blood to the Empress. A debt they can pay off through hard labor until Her Majesty decides it to be repaid. Through hard labor? I like that one. <clears throat> Any point around says their loyalty to Equestria is free to go. Let them be freed. The war is over. For now. Of course, there's that one. Pardon for the element bearers. Crime and punishment. A tale of two sisters. Long ago, there were two regal sisters who ruled the land, providing safety and happiness for all the ponies now. There's only Nightmare Moon, the true ruler of Equestria. Nonetheless, ponies find comfort in worshipping what they have to be divine. An official stance on Alicorn divinity has never been made, and it shan't be, but we still may regulate the veneration of such. Um, what focus are we currently doing? If I could grab this up. So the shipyards, of course. If you want to read that again, please as well, please go ahead. Uh, homecoming. The steady chugging sound of the train could almost rock you to sleep, but blue skies didn't have it in them to fall asleep. <clears throat> about ten minutes ago, they had passed an all-too-familiar bridge, and in about twenty minutes, he'd be back home. When he got off to fight for a Celestia, every pony had been so proud of him, and yet he returned home defeated and humiliated, having been let go by Nightmare Moon. He didn't even know what to think about it all, only that part of him didn't want to go home. He wanted to live, to be free, but he didn't know how to face... Uh, those hopeful faces at home. The entire world seemed to have turned upside down. He didn't know what to think of it. Any of it. The zeal with which he had fought being replaced with doubt. Was a Nightmare Moon meant to be a vicious tyrant, and yet she had just let them go? If that was wrong, then what else he, that he knew was wrong as well? He didn't want to think about it. He felt like he was, it was undermining all he knew. <clears throat> Stepping out the train at the station, he looked out across his hometown, scratching the back of his head. Uh, as he tried to figure out what the heck to say, they'd be th saying thank Celestia as a, as a safe return, probably. More like, thank Nightmare Moon. And, cool, cool, cool. And, of course, successful defense, as it should be, should it not? Well, congratulations, you're now a general. Don't screw it up. <laughs> Look at all these abilities we can add. If we really wanted to add them, though. For tactics, of course. Bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bong, bong. Basic medium tankerinos. Of course, it's already 10:13. Not bad. Improved like Tankerinos too. If you'd be so kind as to just go ahead and plop yourselves over there and get some military police and whatnot, and more recon, that'd be good. And what else? Military police, Tankerinos, like tanks too. Um, I don't really want to invest in these ones. I'm gonna be good and all to do so, but eh, for now I think we'll be okay. Get a lot more of that stuff too. Uh, we still have war plans, so we're just still chugging along, just building as much as we possibly can for now. So I think that'd be a good thing to do. Um, how about down here? Yeah, we're still building that up, which is taking forever to do. Oh my goodness. Major forest. Um, you know what? We can keep that one there for now, too. But, I tell two sisters. My bad. I thought they could go on for too long. Oh well, whatever. Ah, I thought there was another one. Modern Naval Theory. I knew it. Over here, we're going to choose what? I do want armor. Recovery rate's still pretty good as well, so no more daily armies because too. So, ah, oh, social engineering. It takes a few careful words to topple a regime. If the opponents are content in their lives, they won't cause issues. But even the overflowing cornucopia couldn't even sway aside dedicated revolutionaries. Thus, it become necessary to decide how much should the freedom of speech be regulated. Should it be restricted at all? There's also the question of allowing political activity as well. So, of course, we're still at war with these guys down here, but I wish there was a way we could just like say, eh, well, we peace out now. That'd be kind of nice if there was, but unfortunately, there's not. On Hooves Division? Oh, it sounds like we gotta get a little thick here. A little dummy thick. Organization, you always wanna look at the organization level. You know what? 46 is not super great. But that amount of soft attack you get in exchange is very, very good. The breakthrough gets roughly doubled. <laughs> Air attack, not much more, but whatever. Breakthrough, yeah, heart attacks, not bad. Yeah, a lot more HP though, so. Now we're out of artillery and infantry equipment. Ah, what else is new? I tell two sisters. The old Stalin before had uh, every eye on the throne room on him. 
And they gather points of reaction to the plea range from Gundar Rage and, in Nightmare Moon's case, amusement. The temerity of what he suggested was beyond what she had expected, and she found it amusing enough that she began to laugh, throwing her head back in mirth. Of all the things I can expect my sister's old lackeys to try, this was not one of them. You amuse me, and I will let you justify why I would be so fool uh, foolish or foolish to permit my subjects to worship my sister alongside me before I've thrown you into the dungeon. Your return to question a decade ago was unprecedented. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the old Stalin responded calmly, the very image of confidence. And much of the knowledge of you was relegated to myth. Thanks to this, your loyalists remain hidden and their beliefs unmonitored. If you wish to ensure the stability of your realm, I humbly plead with you to permit your subjects to give praise to your sister and to let them do so openly. They'll have less reason to resent you and you'll be able to keep a closer eye on them. Tell me, was it this audacity that you saw an attempt to coup my sister's student and her school, now I say? Nightmare Moon asked, during the former head of the EEA down. I do what I must to ensure the stability of my homeland, your majesty, now I say, said plainly. I defied your sister to do so, and I challenge you now. Punish me as you see fit, your majesty, but I beg you to consider my proposal. Free to worship celestial, they so please. Regulate it. One person, one accuracy, one faith. I like that one more, but whatever. Yeah, and we're still getting more weekly stability, which is not bad. But, let's see... Our most loyal subjects. Uh, scorn and ostracize. The Thestrals have weathered generations of mistrust by the kin and brethren. Truly, it is they who deserve, are the most deserving of the Empress's love. This institutionalized discrimination shall henceforth cease to exist, and so called Fourth Tribe will be welcomed with open hooves by other ponies, regardless of the opinion on the matter. The new Nightmare Knight. The Stallion had been escorted into the palace in secrecy, meeting Nightmare Moon herself, not in the throne room, but in the distant corner of the palace. Away from prying ears. He was a tall, lanky stallion dressed in a poncho and a wide brimmed hat. He would have projected mystery and a, d a danger was it not for the rubber chicken sitting on his back. Tell me, stallion, are the rumors of your skills true? I heard you are the greatest in your profession across the empire. My accomplishments speak for themselves, your majesty, the stallion answered calmly, his voice low, almost growling. I have yet to fall even once. Tell me what you need done and I will accomplish it. My subjects celebrate nightmare, nightmare Night, yet it is a joke. They dress themselves as whatever childish, frightening thing they can find and leap out from the corners yelling, Boo! They gather candy and laugh about petty scares. It is silly and it is insufficient to celebrate their empress. I want to see it re reinvented into a night for the glory of the empire. I see them gather not for the foolish goofs, but for the night of wonders and man maniac, no, maniac joy. I want it to be a night that surpasses all others where the music does not stop until the light of dawn, even if then. Can you do this? she asked, looking to the stallion whose eyes had widened. Can I ever? exclaimed, his voice rising in pitch. I am seeing parades float down the streets where each city block can come together to compete about. Uh, about the greatest one. There should be a masquerade competition too, with masks, dressing as the spirit of Nightmare Night. Uh, Nightmare Night. To be as glamorous as I can be, competitions to see who can come up with the craziest stunts to shock and throw the audience. It'd be a night of bad wonders, Your Majesty, one that I'll never forget. I was almost bouncing up and down, quivering with eagerness to get to work. Nightmare Moon smiled herself. Finally, her night will become what it deserved to be. Yet this will do wonders for our image. Yes. And we do have a cup of tea here, not coffee this time, but really, really hot tea. But Nightmare Night, a celebration was late uh, last night. The Nightmare Night celebration took place across the Lunar Empire. Ever since the fall of the old order, Nightmare Night has become arguably the most important holiday in the Empire. Unlike previously, it is now a wild celebration and parades throughout all the cities and towns, grand parade floats, uh, depicting local heroes and legends as well as her majesty rolling down the main streets. C cider and wine flows freely and music and dancing fills the night as the vast poets compete about who can be the most, da most glamorous and exciting. Unlike the old Nightmare Night, which is about fright and relief, Maniac Joy characterizes these celebrations as a pony show their adoration for their empress. The wild parting rages on throughout the empire till dawn when the exhausted ponies, or party goers really, finally collapse onto their, or maybe someone else's, beds. Oh boy. There's no guarantees and fewer and fewer really care, of course, after all. Uh, what happens during Nightmare Night stays in Nightmare Night. I can't find my pants still. Oh, I hate when that happens. Okay, so let's show what these guys do, but, you know, whatever. Freedom of speech or freedom from speech? One of the big issues before Her Majesty is how much freedom should be given to her subjects in terms of speech. Many, especially her Chiropteran advisors, suggested the full abolishment of these so-called liberties, their subjects, and they only need to say, think, or say and think what Her Majesty decides. To allow this expression would be to allow dissent. Meanwhile, Light Narrative, a former disciple, has pleaded with Her Majesty to permit her subjects to speak freely. <laughs> Better to hear their concerns in public media at first when things boil over, he advises. The entire issue is highly contentious, and in the end, her choice is Her Majesty's, of course. Few extra provisions will make us unable to censor the press. Free is a relative term. They shall think and speak what we tell them to. Well, I hate that option, but we'll do it anyways. Sport, sport. Uh, where are we at for this? Oh, not bad. We could use some more pony power, though. Hmm, concerning. Build. And. Uh, build, too. 
starts building. Social engineering. I love social engineering. Shaping our society to what it really should be. And we have quite a few comments to go through as well, so. <clears throat> Let's say Security Act. In a public statement of the Nightmare Moon herself, uh, the government has announced a complete and utter ban on all socialist organizations, parties, and propaganda and media. This ban extends to all forms of it, be it anarchism, libertarian, or authoritarian socialism, or any other ideas based on uh, or derived from the writings of Carol Mill Marx or her ilk. Membership in or activities in the service of any socialist organization will carry a jail sentence of up to 30 years. These include any sort of teachings or propagation of socialist ideas, possession or distribution of socialist literature, as well as implementation of socialist principles anywhere in the nation, referencing the existence of Stalingrad. As an example, Nightmare Moon has made it abundantly clear that she will not permit such aberrations to arise in her empire and that, unlike her sister, she will not hesitate to bring the full wrath of the Lunar Empire down on whomever uh, attempts to spread this poison among her subjects. Make sure to inform these na national Bolsheviks that they are banned as well. Honestly, what were you expecting? Not much. Actually. Uh, I want more nightmare stuff. But right now... I always do industrial. Let's do electronics. Um, expanding the Imperial Guard. The Imperial Investigative Service. Ooh. There's always a need to maintain vigil for dissidents and traitors. Who better to employ them than the night-touch thestrals? The intelligence. Operatives we've used throughout the uprising shall be put to use in a more permanent, officialized capacity in an organization that protects the Empress's interests at home and abroad. The night always watches, of course. A lesson from uh, Sere Severayana. As the issue of Stalingrad and its errant political ideology was addressed, it jogged a memory in Nightmare Moon. A memory older than Unified Equestria itself. Before the reign of two sisters, the nobles of Serevyana region were famously firm with their subjects. One of the first methods of controlling the people was to keep the production and distribution of alcohol under the firm hoof. Not only did it help fill the coffers, but also uh, could restrict its consumption to taverns and the like to control the population. The concept of passing to Luna back then, yet Celestia had refused to make use of this policy as they ascended. Now that the Empress of the Night rules alone, the question has come whether it's time to make use of this idea after all. It's a great idea. More vengeful. I am the Empress of the Night, not a cider peddler yes 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 um one of the comments from the last video was uh, heavy flame tanks are the new meadow lights aren't the same anymore so and actually i already know that but yeah but yeah thanks for letting me know again because that's a good reminder the conclusion the lens of the question had been nigh unchanged for a thousand years before that bare moon return and the recent reforms are going to take a long time to settle in all the same though they're being implemented and while change will be slow be inexorable it may take a year it may take time but the empire will be shipped according to not moon's vision after all she has the eternity the seeds have been planted. We couldn't get probably still one political power day, which is still not bad. Still not too shabby, but I do say so myself. Um, not bad. Oh, most loyal subjects. Yep, yeah, that's green. Intelligence agency. Ooh. IIS, the fourth tribe. The festivals were always there, <clears throat> even in time immor immemorial. Yet they were not viewed as equals to the other pony saints to the lack of a role in the three tribe system, and instead they became outcasts. Some, like the Sun Princess, might have claimed that they were still part of Equestria, but <clears throat> the festivals found more kinship with Luna than with her. With her, when Luna rose against Celestia, they were followed only the princess who had taken them seriously. Their war was a thousand years of exclusion during which they endured and remembered. No longer will the festivals be viewed as lesser outcasts. They are. <clears throat> The ponies closest to her majesty, having proved their loyalty through ten centuries, as well as two of the most cataclysmic wars the question has ever seen. There's no more mere hollow praise either, as Nightmare Moon has made sure to sign their status in a law. They will never want for food, shelter, or care again. The lands taken from them during the last ten centuries will be returned to them forcefully needed. And from now on until the end of time, they are the ones who hold the highest status in Equestria instead of the flighty and self-absorbed three tribes. Ah, thanks for most loyal subjects. Merciful. We are merciful gods here. Logistics? Yes, please. Uh, you know what? We'll close this one too. Jackalopes. Sure, why not? We'll do that too. Oh god, dang it! We're doing so so well. I'm just researching this stuff. All right. Um, the Empress is divine right. I like that one a lot. The Nightmare Charter. Yeah, I'll go with this one. Power is not something lightly shared, but springing among ponies makes them feel they're more respected and appreciated for their efforts in managing a state. Furthermore, the resistance would lose much of their ammunition if Lunar Tyrant delegated her responsibilities. So this shall be an official legal document that strictly defines the relationship between the Empress and her subjects. The political power, stability, war, penalty, stability, modifier, surrender limit. As much as I don't get more daily supremacy support, or supremacy support, as well as war support and population. It's good God, we could use more population, why not? But, you know, whatever. Ah, at least I can be take chassis. I got ideas left. Cool. Just 
just lots of tanks. Just just tanks out the wazoo. Oh, hello. Oh, we're back here? Nice. Ah! National Tank Division. That's somewhat medium tanks. Group engines. Grab that one. Uh, which one are we doing? Oh, I want to do this one, but we can't. Oh, we do this one. The Imperial Investigative Service. There's always a need to maintain vigil for the distance of traitors. Oh, who's better to employ them than I touch? Thestrals, of course. <clears throat> Uh, the intelligence officers we've used throughout the uprising should be put to more use. Of course, did I just read this one? Dude. It's been in the guard. Uh, the need to project force always required, particularly after a period of instability and uncertainty. Candela still uh, broods over the loss of their perfect princess, and what better way to quell rebellious slats than with a show of military might? The Empress's personal guard shall be brought in with the prime soldiers who fought in her name during the uprising. Oh, Imperial Guards? Nice. Oh, wow. They're kind of thick. Thicker than these guys. Filthy Ruby. Nice. Revolutionary. Oh boy. Got well, plenty of political power right now, though. Mm, I always use something like that one. Well, that seems pretty good to use, so we're going to go with you again. Uh, rocket artillery sounds like a lot of fun, but as well as anti-tank, we could probably honestly use better anti-tank. So, oh, Chris Empire, that's kind of wasn't too, huh? Nice, nightmare driver. Medium aircraft. Hold on. Oh, wow, they're doing pretty doing well already so far. Oh. <clears throat> But I did ask you guys yesterday, we should do Lunarist Capitalism versus Centralized Economic Development. And overall, at right, the time of this recording, there is more support for... Lunarist Capitalism. Seemingly nebulous, the principles of the free market and the visible hoof, coined by Eva Blacksmith and Day Ray, in <clears throat> the previous century of served Equestria well. In spite of growing class inequality, the land has prospered and reached new heights of modernity. Why reinvent the saddle to get rich for the Empress shall remain glorious. Midnight spray? That sounds like when you go to the bathroom, but anyways. Supply. I do not want a single supply issue down here at all. Supplies, and you can go and put some over there. Um, yeah, fuel, maybe rockets and whatnot, you know. Oh, lunarist capitalism. Gotta love capitalism. Or do we really? Super heavy tanks? It's like kind of a wild adventure to choose. Bob Lake City? Cool. Advanced medium. Mm. Early main battle tanks, that's pretty too far. Yeah, medium tanks probably what we should really focus on, so. Advanced mediums. Now, I'll make a tank off screen in just a little bit, but uh, some comments include The changings do have a big advantage when they attack quickly against an equestrian that's not mobilized or uh, beset by internal strife. Uh, without the civil war out of the way already, we have more ponies under arms, military capability, and stuff like that, so. Basically, the changings were heavily built around tanks, very quickly ran out of steam if they crash into radio defenses and ten divisions. So, and we also have the Crystal, Alliance, Crystal Empire helping us too. So, we got a lot of guns. So, someone, he also asked, why no extraction efficiency instead of infrastructure in every last backwater? Yeah. Someone says, like I said earlier, heavy flame tanks are new, the, the new meta. I like to, aren't the same anymore. Do luminous capitalism. Someone says, being merciful seems to really work out so far. You get a heavy chunk of pony power and a broken amount of building slash from one decision. You beat the heck out of your people's ancestral rivals, and you even got a house husband with cool laser eyes. Um, and someone else said, let me see where I can find that comment as well. The backstory of King Sombra and Luna's a fan-made concept album made about it called Fall of an Empire. Which seems pretty cool. Someone else says, what in the flying F? Why is this in my feed? Because you should watch this video. And the last video too. That's why. But in the meantime, do we need just one of the following? Oh, we need that too. Crimish Punishment. 
Pardon for the element bears. If you don't need this, please go right ahead. But we're going to go with a patron. Or pardon for the element bears. The elements of harmony are one of the very few artifacts that can harm the empress, but the mares wielding them need not to suffer harm. Mere pawns of Celeste should nothing more. We can show the ponies that we are kind of merciful. We'll keep the more dangerous jewels under a lock and key in a safe location. Uh, Alla ponies magical training. <clears throat> Take another step towards harvesting the enormous power of magic, we shall make it mandatory for all unicorns and armed forces to participate in magical training. That's way they can hone their skills and learn to use them for military purposes. And then revive, revive the EEA. The EEA was once the authority for all education in Equestria, while it's fallen to disuse due to the Civil War. Our Empress has come with a novel idea to repurpose the EEA to serve the new lunar state in all matters of education. They have us to both secure rule and focus our educational efforts. The elements forgiven. The six element bearers stood in front of Nightmare Moon, each of them in chains to the Empress of the Night towered above them. Her haughty gaze traveling over each of our old nemeses. Even after defeat, capture, and imprisonment, they still did not show fear. We meet again, element bearers. Nightmare Moon addressed them, being given no answers. She walked down from her throne to face them, staring into their eyes one after the other. Just do what you're planning to do, Twilight Sparkle responds icily after a while. We're not going to bow. Oh, but gloating is the prerogative of a victor, is it not? She smirked. I recall how you gloated the first time we met, and you sealed me away. But very well, guard, she ordered. Turning to walk up the throne as the armor ponies around them walked up to the six mares, grabbing them and unlocking their manacles. Turning around as she reached her throne, Nightmare Moon sat down. <coughs> it would be the easiest thing in the world to end you here now, but in the end, new element bears will step forth, and I'm not planning to dance this dance any longer. You're free to go to live your lives in Ponyville without fear of retribution. If we will fight again, it'll be because the ingrate my sister chose as a student chose to, instead of continuing to protect the ponies of these lands, repay mercy with vengeance, she smirked, savoring the look on Twilight Sparkle's face, confusion followed by the realization, and then shame. Her naivety was almost endearing. Guard, she ordered. See it too that they return to Ponyville. As for you, she stared at her old enemies down. May we not meet again, and may you live peacefully. El the elements shall always protect us. <clears throat> Just above all else. Alongside many captured prisoners of war, there are war leaders. Celeste herself has already been dealt with in an unspecified manner, but still, still remains the need to give these rabble rousers a fair and honest trial. And they show proper reverence to the new rule, and forsake their past oaths. The punishment may be more lenient. Oh. Honesty. The barn door slammed open, and an applejack face hoofed where she stood by the car, knowing what awaited when she turned around. <clears throat> this has gone on for long enough, Granny Smith yelled as, he, she, mar as she marched out of the house, a helmet on her head and holding a musket. Uh, there's still some fight left in Equestrian, and we apples will lead the Hawaii. She puts as, as Big Mac came up and took the musket from her, you give me that gun back right now this instant, Big Mac. <clears throat> nope, the giant uh, stallion said evenly, blocking her path as Applejack came uh, hurrying to his side. We've been over this, Granny, and you ain't going anywhere, he told her, him and Applejack both gently taking her under one leg, each to drag her inside again. You're all seduced by the Dark Queen, I tell you, Granny Smith hollered, but they're still alive in the Apple family. Celestia's not forgotten, and we apples will fight to the end. We're apples to the core. I'm telling you, we're not going to war again, Applejack said, silently dreading the fate that it was waiting them all. That's going to be her life from now on, wasn't it? The war's over, and we have to farm to run, she told her grandmother frantically. The apples remember, Granny Smith yelled in response, waving her hoof in the air. About an hour later, the situation was resolved, and Big Mac and Applejack were both slouched over the kitchen table. As Apple Bloom came home from school, seeing her siblings at the table, she slowly put away her bags before speaking up. Granny, she asked. Big Mac looked up at her. Yep. Is this Nightmare Moon's punishment? The Nightmare. Via media. We'll probably do the Moon, the Princess, and the Nightmare. As official religion, we shall adopt a model held by our native and more moderate supporters in Equestria. But the Nightmare, Princess Luna, and the Moon itself are all separable, separate entities. They are equally important to our belief, but it must be considered the same. This separation should also bring more converts who still remember Princess Luna. <clears throat> Better compliance, Crow. be nice. Kindness. I'm sorry. Fluttershy said gently to Filthy and Spoiled Rich. Part of her wanted to yell them for the harebrained idea that they had gotten, but it was a very small part that she did not want to indulge. Instead, she explained as calmly as she could, bats make for terrible pets. They're born to fly about and hunt insects or find fruit. Gaging them will make them miserable and lonely, and they like to cuddle each other more than ponies. Oh, that's a, that's a real shame, Filthy Rich said thoughtfully. So hoping to find some way to make an impression on the nouveau rich theostrals, but seems to be the wrong way. We have money now, Spoiled Rich Mark. Just hire some pony to manage a larger enclosure for them. They also stink, Fluttershy pointed out. In order to mark their scent, they rub themselves as well as uh, uh, places around them with their urine several times a day. Any further discussion was unnecessary at this point, and the pair yielded on the topic. After a, fur a brief further discussion, they departed, and Fluttershy could give up a small sigh of relief. Those was the fourth point this week who had asked about bats as pets. It was good that ponies were less scared of bats, but this idea of having them as pets was just absurd to her. So many ponies still didn't understand animals, especially not animals as special as bats. I stood a knock on the door of startled her, and she walked to see who it was. It was not some pony she knew. And so it was a tall, gangly bat pony wearing a cloak and a monocle. He towered above her, staring down at her with an intense gaze that made her almost recoil before he pointed at her. You are worthy, he exclaimed, taking out a stamp from the cloak and slamming it into her door frame to leave a bat-shaped mark on it. My children will find shelter with you. Good, take, care of, take good care of them. With that, he turned around and just left as a swarm of bats came from the trees, flying straight into her house in a torrent of shrieking and fluttering. Eek! Nightmare uh, night celebrations.
Uh, I guess we can't find our pants again. You know, well, I hate it when that happens. They just disappear, you know? A solar straw. So let's just been banished, but we managed to capture most of the solar's generals and leaders. Those with their empress's right and ability to simply banish them, she's chosen to put them on trial. The mewing, a uh, uh, mewling of the populace has demanded attention, and the empress has chosen to give it, the accused at least a chance to plead the case before. Their guilt may be beyond doubt, but their display will serve or reinforce her absolute power over service, but maybe even there are those who can be turned to server. This would be so much quicker if we just shoot them. Yeah, I know, it'd be much easier. But Imperial, Co Imperial Coast Guard. A substantial number of life vessels and patrol boats have been captured during the struggle against celestial tyranny, but the various states of disrepair left the majority of the mothballed scrap for iron. What we need is a more modern design for a light and durable warship that can cross long distances while also being easy to retrofit for any purpose, from laying mines and sub technology or hunting. <clears throat> and laughter. What is wrong with this town, Pinkie Pie exclaimed to the clerk in the last door after six hours of searching. No raspberries, no strawberries, blueberries, nothing. Aren't they supposed to be in season? Scratch that, we don't we have freezers anymore? It's just that we're struggling to get deliveries, the clerk apologized. Everything else is going fine, but berries are chronically missing. Good riddance, the voice said early behind her, and Pookie looked back to see one of the newcomers in town, a hobby bat pony by the name of Lida Jar. Berries are overrated nonsense. What? Pinky exclaimed in disbelief. Are you crazy? Berries are vital to make a good cake. The balance of fruity and sweet are what makes a good cake what it is. If you need fruity, why not use fruit? Lida Jar asked. Berries don't provide anything that you can't get from good fruit except wasted space. I mean, fruit is fine, but it's not nearly as sweet. Besides, if you have to chop them up, they'll lick across the cake. <clears throat> you have to prepare them, and then just want to use berries instead. Pinky was about to have a mental breakdown. What was she talking about? What was this insane notion, this twisted farce? Sure, stay with the foals if you want to. Leave the fruits to the adults. That's it, Pinky exclaimed. We'll sell this the right way. I challenge you to a bake-off, she yelled, dramatically pointing at Lida Jar, whose eyes narrowed. You are on, berry muncher, she growled. Just don't cry when I prove you wrong. That's my line, Pinky retorted, the two mares glaring each other down. Let the bake-off begin. <clears throat> Are we... It's heavy tanks, super heavy tanks. You know what, let's wait. I want to see what the heavy super heavy tanks are like, too. And since we're here, oh, we're doing this a whole bunch. Um, Detroit Motors. Or oh, Detroit Motors. Nightmare mo Nightmare Motors. Yeah, we gotta go with that one. The trial of Commander Fast Club. Commander Fast Club served in the Wonderbolt as a drill sergeant as well as Captain Spitfire, second in command. Many of his duties were administrative, and he helped with the organizing of the question military during the Civil War, not the least when it came to training soldiers, yet at the same time. <coughs> Our reports indicate that he has always been loyal to Equestria, not to a true or maybe uh, this can offer an alternative. If presented with a choice between a lifetime rotting away in prison and one serving a Equestria's new ruler, maybe he'll be open to bowing to the knight. Converting one of Celestia's vaunted Wonderbolts to her service would be a fine trophy. Make him an offer. Throw him in a dungeon. Fast Club. <coughs> Generosity. A base of either midnight blues with sapphires or dark violet with amethyst, either combination of potential. Silver threaded for the details, of course. She couldn't deny that she missed working with gold thread, but limitations were where true mastery showed itself. This she was a cut, however. Should she go a bit more daring or keep it conservative? Rarity was mulling the question over, leaning back in her seat when she suddenly realized something sighing deeply. Was she a bad pony? She knew her friends had struggled after the Civil War, some of them deeply. So many ponies had been hurt and struggled to rebuild their lives. Some would never get back all that they had lost, and yet here she was, selling dresses to the high society ponies. With the recent changes, there were plenty of newly moneyed festivals who wanted to indulge in the world of fashion, and many came to her. Business was booming for her, and she hadn't even managed to hire a new pair of tailors to help her out. It felt shameful, but like she was exploiting the suffering of others around her. But what more could she do? She made sure to funnel profits into clothing that orphaned in the homeless. She had positive interactions with the bad ponies to help mend the rifts in society to some small extent, and she made a point of serving every pony equally. What else could a pony do in these days? She didn't know, and she, but she knew it felt so wrong somehow. <clears throat> she should go with a more daring cut. Her client was a very meek pony, and maybe she'd wanted to flaunt what she had. Also, if the client was really happy, maybe she'd be more open to joining in a charity drive for those who had suffered after the war. We really couldn't think of much else to do, but she knew she had to do something. I'll have to help somehow. And just in case. Ooh. If we research mechanized infantry, completing this focus will spawn one 18 combat with division. M Imperial Marines with amphibious mechanized. Or just normal Marines. <clears throat> a grand army has many soldiers, but a truly magnificent one has many specialists as well. Like, uh, the kind that the common soldiers look up to in awe, inspiring stallions and mares with their daring feet of bravery in difficult circumstances. This thought has led to the idea of forming dedicated squadrons specialized in fighting in amphibious terrain who shall be the first to carry the lunar banner across waters. And the Lunar Strategic Air Service. As the continues, uh, oh good god, to change in, with each innovation, a uh, few strategies remain fundamental, one of them being importance of arriving first on the battlefield. To this end, we've approved the formation of a lot of airborne force that can be deployed anywhere in the lesson of the night, assisted by parachutes. The trial commander Whiplash. He is not a very famous Wonderbolt, but he's been a long serving and relentless soldier ever since he joined. And there's no hope of convincing him to bow before the night. At the same time, there are a few crimes against the night that can actually be pinned on him. His execution would cause too much of a stir, especially since he had offered to swear an oath to never raise a hoof against a knight if it's what it takes. Clemency is out of the question, but maybe he could be given an exile instead. Throwing him out of the Empire would be one form of mercy after all. 
Axelhelm. Loyalty, continu continuity was fun. She liked when things came together in the end. That's why she'd adorn the callbacks for the Daring Do books. When some figure that appeared at three books back returned, it was thrilling. It helped her to let her feel like she was all, it was all part of one great, gigantic story. Not this kind of continuity, though. One could eat a massive horse apple. And this one could. It's been a long time since she and her friends had had their first encounter with Nightmare Moon. During it, Rainbow Dash remembered how Nightmare Moon had taunted her, teasing her with the idea of joining the Shadow Bolts, the lunar equivalent of the Wonder Bolt. It was all a bit of a haze to her still. She remembered how it had been a dreamlike, and the entire issue of Nightmare Moon seemed so distant. Logic hadn't made sense in that dream, but a loyalty to her friends had. Otherwise, maybe she would have fallen for it. But, so why was this whole thing come crashing down on her again? Staring at the letter she had gotten, she read the text over again, owing to your documented skills as a flyer as well as your previous services. The Imperial Shadow Bolts wished to extend the invitation to, for you to serve as an instructor in the ranks. Gal yelled out loud, <clears throat> or yelling out loud. She burst into the air, flying as fast as she could across, away from the sky. Across the sky. Stupid, 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 stupid. The Wonder Bolts were gone and her dream was in the dirt. She'd only barely been able to accept that, and yet now this stupid offer had come crashing down in front of her to ruin what little piece she found. She could do it. She uh, she could be one of the high flyers again. She could even be an instructor. She'd have to dream. She'd she'd have what she dreamed of after all. But the Shadow Bolts, seriously, did they really think that she was going to sell up that much? After about an hour, she landed back at home and stormed at the house, exhausted. She battled to toss the letter in the trash, but hesitated, and in the end, leaving it on the kitchen table before going to shower. She'd, she'd deal with that later on or something. I think I'm getting a headache. The trial of Commander Soren. It was, to say the least, one of the most popular commanders in the Solar Army, most because of his fame as a Wonderbolt. However, he's a client, any and all offers we've made him in an effort to convince him to serve the Empress, and thus she's been left in a situation where there are no easy options. Imprisonment and banishment will cause equal stir, yet her judgment must pass. Where's gonna throw away the key? X out. Mm, let's go this one. Magic. Jumping down from the step stool, Spike took the tray of soup off the counter and walked through the hallway. He'd been terrified when Nightmare Moon won, but at least he had been allowed to go. They'd been allowed to go. That day had left him in the hopeful. Twilight would know what to do, he'd been sure of it, and yet he had tried to keep on a brave face, but he was feeling sick to his stomach. Opening the door to the dark bedroom, he slipped inside and came up to Twilight's bed. With a small climb, he got up to put the tray on her nightstand and gently put the blanket down, blanket down to reveal Twilight's haggard face. Wakey, wakey, he said as he gently shook her shoulder and reached for the bowl. I've got dinner. It's Daisy Soup. It seemed to take all the strength Twilight had to push herself up, with some help from him, and take the spoon. Her face was just blank as she ate. No comments about the food, no praise, nothing. After half the bowl, she slowed down, and Spike gently urged her on. Come on, just a little more, Twilight. Twilight only shook her head, and Spike smiled. It's okay, he assured her, putting the bowl on the bedside. Do you want to go to the library? I could get you a book if you wanted one. No, Twilight whispered, staring down at the bed. Spike didn't push the issue. He felt so small, so helpless, like he couldn't do anything right. Twilight was devastated after Celestia was banished, and all she knew had fallen apart, and all he could do was cook food. The girls came by as much as they could, but he was the one who was here. Slowly, he felt the disappointment at himself growing. Before he could stop himself, grab before a small sob came out. Forcing himself to stop, he cleared his throat. Well, I'll go do the dishes in. Twilight hugged him. Leaning forward, she wrapped her front hooves around him as she sobbed herself. I'm so sorry, Spike. I'm so sorry, she whispered, her voice breaking. Spike couldn't hold it back anymore, hugging, hugging her as his own tears came. I just don't know what to do anymore. Like me in life, not sure what to do. But the trial of Prince Blue Blood, the Blue Blood that lived before the Civil War, might as well be a completely different pony from the stallion that served as one of the Solar's top commanders during the Civil War. The respect he commanded in his role, as well as high status among the nobility, meant that converting him was one of Her Majesty's premier goals. As she permitted him or presented him with the offer before the trial, Blue Blood's, Blue Blood's answer, as it turned out, came within the hour. To her Highness Princess Luna, I have no intent of acknowledging your new absurd name. Thank you for the letter regarding a general's commission in your forces. Under no circumstances do I consent to this kind of obscene brief, and that's what I'm presented with no further offers of this nature. Just regarding the treason it would entail, the oath about serving the knight, is as absurd as it is pointless, as my firm intent not to take any position in question until Lady Cretan and criminal traitor have ceased appointing generals, and preferably cease everything else as well. There is nothing you or your slaves can offer me, for my one desire at the moment is that the fires of Tartarus may wipe clean the world in which these kinds of deranged lunacies are bred out of the villains that generated couplings with traitors. Yours, Prince, Prince Blue Blood. Man, she's enraged enough that she almost had him similarly or similarly executed. Yet the realization that this was likely the intent in order to foment unrest among her subjects calmed her. Blue Blood will stand trial like all others, even if mercy is long since passed from her majesty's mind. Let him rot in house arrest. Axel, house arrest. For now. The trials are over. With Prince Blue Blood's trial over and the so called Solar's trials are finally finished, and the enemy leaders have been properly dealt with. The fact that they were given actual trials surprised many and undercut some of the more fervent rabble rousers. Though the Empress is the final word in the Lunar Empire, the law nevertheless holds sway, and those who claim that the ponies of Equestria will be left in anarchy and at her whims have no leg to stand on. It's clear that her closest servants at the process, not the least. Blue Blood's reply to her offer vexed her greatly, but in return, her grip on Equestria is tightened as she showed her subjects a contrary to the rabble rousers, doomsday prophecies. There's still be rule of law under her. Back to business. Back to business. Still going down, unfortunately.
But oh well. Spirit of knowledge. Ah, so we can do the swan, but we're going to do the moon princess in the nightmare, so. Uh, as our official religion, we should adopt a model to help our native and more moderate supporters of Equestria, of course. So if you're going to do this again, please go ahead. If you really want to, but there it is. Yay. Cruiser killers? Nice. Killing things? Nice. And I just realized. I'm going to field marshal here. Also, um, I went crazy. And we didn't go heavy tanks. We went super heavy tanks. Why did I do that? I don't know. Actually, why are you so slow? Is it because of these tanks? Oh, is it, is it because of the armored recon? Ah, armored recon actually slows us down quite a bit. Yeah, I'll take it off then. Replace it with... Um, you'd still be faster if you added this one, but if we don't add this one, that's fine. Plus 35% urban attack. Fort. Oh, movement and attack. Plus 40%. Jesus. Yeah, I would rather have it a little faster, so... If anything, motorized recon. It hurts. Actually. You know what? I'd rather get motorized recon because at least they can keep up. You know what? Sure, why not? Screw it. You guys. We're going to replace what? I like the arty. We already have a lot of arty, anyways. Support anti air. We should have enough divisions to cover the air, anyways. Super heavy tanks. It gives us 41 armor. That's ridiculous. Nice. Why did you say super heavy? Because what else are we going to spend our production costs on? Because why not? I'm never going to probably do super heavy armor again, which is a total lie. I'll totally do it again sometime, but screw it. Why not, right? Why not? Um, at this point, go ahead and stop. Hearts and Minds. Oh. That's a war plan. We're done with war plan. Law and order restored. The winds of change have swept through Equestria, leaving a society that's drastically different from what it used to be the norm. Now, the moon provides and protects every pony far better than the use of Celestia ever could. It won't be long until the hordes of the war are forgotten, and the new routine is accepted without question. All thanks to the rational pragmatism employed by our auspicious ruler. Way more political power, stability, and war support. Yes, please. And let's look at Mechanize, shall we? Mechanize a tree. Yes, please. Paratroopers, I'm just not going to use them. I'm sorry. No Griffonia. Nice. So we are consuming goods a little bit, but it's still alright. You know what? I'm doing motorization. Triumph motors. Actually, is there main hand? No. There's no uh, nightmare moon motors. Darn it. Besides, we have the steel and the tungsten. Or uh, chromium, I mean, for now, at least. Yeah, why have I not done resource extraction? What the heck is wrong with me? You guys are right. Grab that too. Why am I focus so much, so much on tanks? Nice. And then we can do the Empire Secured. Hopefully. The question doesn't seem much such an upheaval since the first Nightmare Uprising, but our efforts have resulted in the creation of a state that does its function far better than the predecessor. The Empress protects the weak, punishes the insolent, and rules over the entirety of Equestria. Long may the everlasting night reign. Yes. Let's go and come over here, too. Right now, garrison regiments. We have military police on them already, so we're just missing the tanks. Which is taking a while to make, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, Supply-wise, how are we doing on the front line against the south? We're doing not bad. We're doing alright. Pretty much the best of what you could probably expect. You might want to throw one more there, maybe even one up here too, but it is what it is. Loads of supply. What are we making that we're not using? Proved anti air? No. Oh. Whatever. I'm not even sure we'll even really use ships at this point too. Oh well. Can you stop making my divisions go all sorts of different places, please? Oh, there you go. Advanced trucks. Empire secured. Australia, no. Oh well. I like this one most, but we need to own Baltimore. 
Less armor, more range, deck size. I like the big deck size. Warplan Reb. Further to the north, a desperate group of opponents have cast aside Celestia's yoke and formed their own state. An admirable achievement, but if it weren't for their dangerous ideology, which runs overcome their borders. Uh, swooping aside, they establish rule on a bloody revolution for their nebulous fantasy that's really un unviable. They must be stopped in the tracks. And if you want to read about Plan Green as well, as well as integrate the disciples' leadership, please go right ahead. Gazing out of the window in her chambers, Nightmare Moon enjoyed the first calm night and who, who knew how long. In the time after triumph, she had been working tirelessly to bring order to the Empire, and things were finally calming down. Tomorrow will bring new issues and worries, yet for now, she had to push past the first mountain and challenges. She was the Empress of the Lunar Empire, unquestioned and challenged, yet she found herself pensive. For all existence in this form, she had struggled, and now she found herself reflecting on what had passed. She had to regret her actions, never had. She would have never meekly cowed before the unjust rule. She took what she deserved by force if needed. Yet there's more to it than that. The Festivals, her little ponies, deserved more than what the world had dealt them as well, and Celestia had stood in the way of that. When push came to shove, uh, uh, Celestia's equestria hated her Thestrals too much, and her response to Nightmare Moon had crushed them all. Uh, but things could have turned out differently. She did not know, and it vexed her, after the minutia of politics and state craft that she had gone through. So much of what a Celestia had done made sense to her, and with the understanding came doubt in her own actions. She did not regret what she had done still, but maybe, maybe, she was regretting the necessity. And these down slowly approaching, and Nightmare Moon felt a sudden strange sensation, loneliness. As the sun slowly rose over the horizon, she suddenly wondered if, a thousand years from now, Celestia would be able to finally understand. The stage was a bloody one, Nightmare Moon knew that well, but in the end, the quest would also be safe, safer than a Celestia had ever managed to make it. The Iron Hoof was not a failure, it was a necessity, and her actions would prove right. My opponents will love me, and my enemies fear me. So we lose daily political power, gain Empress of the Night, just by War Goals times, where we gain a benevolent princess for the same amount of political power, more stability, division defense, ideology drift defense, and acceptance of harmonious diplomacy. Eh, not bad. Not too bad. Um, come up there, because we can. Why not? Why not? Followed up with what? Warplan Gray. Opportunists, deserters, and war profiteers. These few words sum the motivations of ponies in the southwest and Equestria. This area is comparatively worth less than the rest, and it were not for the recent growth in oil processing industries. As the Empress of all Equestrian ponies, we, they must be brought back to the fold. And they should be brought back. Also with these tank divisions. 18 combo with, and yeah, they're looking okay. I'm not super concerned about these guys over here. It's fine. That's a, not a lot of good uh, stuff there. It's fine with us, but still. Um, a lot of building. Uh oh, oh, do we actually lose ships here? Holy crap! Oh, just that stuff. Okay. Oh, we got this ship thing. First lunar marines. Nice Amtraks. Cool. Yeah, throw one or two. Why not? Throw on. Ghastly Gorges. That's weird, that's 27, that's odd. A little odd, but whatever. Warplan White, New Kingdom in the North. Look at that. Uh, and Van Hoover, uh, Navy officers mutinied, and the Civil War broke out and rebelled against Celestia's rule. But after that, they instead established a tyrannical communist government, and a northern border must be secured in the loyalty of the Crystal Empire ensured. Our Empress saved them from the Sombra a thousand years ago, and in return they should recognize her supremacy. Guys, we'll take more stuff. Bouse the house. March upon Mixie. Oh man. Nice. Claim the fleet. When the Civil War broke out, the opportunist uh, Admiral Dust Hoover took a major majority of the Equestrian fleet to Van Hoover, where he set up his Tim Pot Social Dictatorship, hoping to connect with his distant allies in Stalingrad, fortunately. As the revolution failed, and what's left is to scour the air of his supporters and reclaim the fleet before they deny it to us. Hurt it much. Hurt it much. We're really far behind in the industry, even though we're doing. I mean, there's not really much that enemies can do to us at this point, but still. We 
Here we go. Oopsie. Crap. Well, let's do that again. Just in case. Or plan white. Claim the fleet. Integrate the Crystal Administration. Now that the Crystal Empire is secure within the Lunar Dominion, we can prepare to expand the Imperial Administration northward. It is especially vital that Crystal City be integrated smoothly, so we will take full of it, control of its significant industry and population. As we keep the royal families of Crystal Empire's hostages, locals should think twice before resisting us. Should be removed pretty darn quickly through all this stuff, right? Right, and you're gonna force the attack, right? No? Okay. Can they pierce our boys? No. Nice. Very nice. Las Vegas is gone as it should be. Nice. Awesome. Ah. Advanced trucks. Oh. Sure, because why not? Ah, finally we can do this one. Strategic warfare? Yeah. Motorized warfare, even though we do have some motorized and stuff, uh, it's still good to go with lugger operations. Critical tactical theories? Yes. Infantry engineering training? Nice. Expand entrenchments? Yes. Oh, plus 10. Jesus Christ, that's strong. Another plus 10? Love it. And we get 1, 2, 3, 98 cores. Oh, good God, we could use those so badly. Conclude the uh, Marxist experiment. The deliberation, a de oh, devilation of the communist state, the task is left to us to pacify and control the civilian populace. Some have little love for their overlords, lying low to dissuade any unwarranted attention, but a far greater number of opponents have become ideologically indoctrinated and refuse to cooperate with the new rulers, of course. So the thorough dismantling of the Marcus Marxist system is required to bring them under control. Ah, the South has fallen very easily. Or bring them in line, at the very least. The Buffalo Question. The Buffalo have lived along the prairies and deserts of the Southwest for many generations and blessed to isolation from others who had interfered in their sacred traditions. Their wandering areas have been far greater in the past, but today they're confined to the heartlands of their ancestral homes. Perhaps they might have used to the Emperor's decrees so. At this point, just make more ships. I don't really care. Aye. Well, if they want to attack us, we'll just kill them all off then. So be it. I still can't find my pants. My pants, I, I, I I'm always seem to be losing my pants. Okay, so they're actually invading us. Holy crap. Actually, technically, they did go to war them too, but you know, whatever. Well, I love war. That's all. There you go. You can do that one if you want. You can do not that one. Half tracks, more extraction. Well, the Yakis down. Nice. Oh my goodness. The Southeastern Reorganization, under Celestia's misguided rule, the Southeast suffered from neglect and underdevelopment. Our Empress is not so heartless, especially as the region is a homeland of Thestrals and contains many lunarous holy sites. She is determined to improve the livelihoods of the local Thestral communities and providing care which Celestia failed to give. Buffalo question. Well, the Buffalo Land Seas, of course. Ah, uh, the question is of what to make of the strange species. Their earlier confrontations with the southern ponies have proven that they're not a people to go down silently. But the weakness makes this an inevitability all the same. They are pitiable. Uh, yeah, proud and nightmare moon has found them pliable as well as appearing before the tribal editors in all their glory. To so offer them guarantees for the eternity of a rule. 
This comes with a caveat, however, and that they'll swallow eternal fealty to her, the moon goddess, and serve her whenever she calls upon them. The buffalo exhausted and have agreed, and at least is a clear guarantee. I will give them a place under me. Code talkers, nice. How do we lose? What the heck? How do we lose this? No, 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 no. They don't have a good enough navy for that. No, 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 no. Um. Hope they want to do it again. I'm not really worried about this at all. Nighttime and Mixie. The southern ponies are stubborn and difficult to control. Fiercely proud of their independent nature, centered on private property and ownership of firearms. Their opposition makes it difficult to integrate the region. With a lot of local collaborators, there will be the need for harsh uh, measures to restore control. Nice half tracks. I can make you care. For a thousand years, the Thessalons of the Southwest have lived in their own communities. I saved from the rest of Equestria after they threw in their lot behind Nightmare Moon during the first appearance. She was all they had to believe in, so they fought for. Now, a thousand years later, they're finally given their due. Now, the uh, immense resources are being poured into the region to open it up for future development. To ensure that the Thess will be housed and fed, and that from now on until eternity, the South will become a prosperous haven for all Batponies. The Empress of the Night has not forgotten how much they gave up for her, and she will not let their faithfulness go unrewarded. rewarded. A uh, well deserved reward. Nice. Kill them off. Every last one of them. There's a nothing. The Empress that broke the house. The Lost Pegasus is a curious case, a secession caused by personal interests and greed, rather than deluded ideas of revolution or resistance. Nonetheless, the resistance has been crushed and their ploys have been undone. It remains to be seen what to do with their leaders and resources. Arrogant industrialists will think twice before dreaming of another get rich scheme. They will think twice. Um. The Empress that broke the house. Yeah. Are we supposed to do something with Crystal Empire? Oh, it was up here, isn't it? No? Warp Plants? A matter of the Crystal Empire. Beyond the northern border of the Lunar Empire lies another empire, that of the Crystal Ponies. While they do not actively oppose Nightmare Moon during the Civil War, it's questionable if they can truly trust King Sombra, even though we're married to him. They might well harbor sympathies for Celestia, and our followers could be plotting against her at this very moment. The Crystal Empire has barely any Thestrals living in it, so why would they care for their plight? Something must be done to ensure the safety of our northern frontier. The Empress is advised to propose two actions, one of which must be chosen. Either a swift military offensive will be unleashed to bring the Crystal Ponies under direct imperial rule, or an envoy will be sent to offer them a chance to peacefully bow before her. We ex expect King Summer to be unhappy with the ultimatum, but the choice is not theirs, it is their Empress's. Demand the subservience? They accept. Their decision play as Crystal Empire will be. It plays them? Perhaps we should ask for a friend. Um. I won't demand the subservience, but. Visiting a friend. It is uh, rather quaint that you visit, wish to enjoy a cup of tea with me, but I suspect that you want something more. Rarity looked at Nightmare Moon with a frown as you should pour hot tea into her cup. The Empress nodded in response. Certainly, first, uh, I would like some biscuits, please, she said, projecting an image of real disinterest. The unicorn smiled forcedly at the response, all but rolling her eyes at the Empress of the Question. With due respect, Your ma Majesty, I know what I meant. Uh, in response, Nightmare Moon levitated the cup and blew into the steaming liquid, saying nothing even as Rarity watched her. Slowly, the cup rose, and the Empress sipped. A good tea. Now, where are those biscuits? Certainly, Your Majesty. Rarity's smile was turning stiff as she levitated a box of biscuits under the table. Nightmare Moon was taking one bite, was taking one and biting down on it. 
Now, if I'm not imposing, we already asked Wheelie, letting the question hang in the air. Should I have dragged you before me and changed the many servitude on pain of death? Now, Ember Moon asked her the imperious tone with which she usually spoke coming out and leaving Rarity to recoil slightly before seeing the smirk on Nightmare Moon's face. Now that true has been repaid in kind, I do this for the same reason that I called you here. The Crystal Empire is still defying me, and I'm not so simple to think war is the only response. I want you to go to the King Crystal Empire and convince her, my husband to submit to me. In return, I'll let the Crystal Ponies keep some of their independence, and you'll serve as a governor. The blunt comment left Rarity to stare at Nightmare Moon, who calmly took another bite of her biscuit. Your taste in biscuits is commendable. I thank you, Your Majesty. Nightmare, or Nighttime and Mixie. Though the Southwest is back under royal control, the Southern Ponies are still or South Ron ponies, are still anything but finished. They've been a stubborn and peculiar lot for decades, and there's no doubt they'll gladly continue resisting Her Majesty's rule in the future as well. To address us, Nightmare Moon has paid a visit to J.D. Navis, one of the more uh, important figures of the region. Navis, oh god. Uh, reminding the stallion that she was not Celestia and that she was prepared to let the South burn if that's what it took to have peace, she proceeded to ask Navis well, what he was prepared to do to ensure that the bloodshed came to an end sooner rather than later. The discussion lasted until the small hours of the morning, yet when they emerged from their meeting, Navis publicly stated his intent to serve the Empress of the Night so that the South can still keep its soul. He was proud, but he will serve us well. Oh, they get way more political power this guy, huh? The ample Crystal Empire defiant. The envoy was sent to the Crystal Empire Center to return with an armed escort. Uh, the ultimatum she delivered in person to King Sombra was brashly refused, and the Crystal Empire refused to recognize us as her rightful overlords. Now they've revealed their true fates as traitors and worshippers of Celestia. The Empress must deal with them swiftly and most ruthlessly. This means war. We've been betrayed by our own husband. Oh my goodness. What the heck? Bros. We fought together. But you still chose war. Well, I guess this marriage is over. Cannot declare wars. Why can we not declare wars? Oh, is it because of this? <sighs> Stupid. That should not be here still. But, you know, all these cons commands in. Whatever. Screw it. Navy Aviation Department. Despite advancements in shipbuilding, naval vessels have shown to be vulnerable to attacks from the skies that are unsupported by aircraft of their own. Those would be prudent to convert one of our existing bomber designs to be suited for crossing vast oceans and carrying a higher payload. Additionally, plans have been drawn up for a variant that can launch from converted cruiser hulls. We'll plan black. Changing lines blue. Gold, Crimson, Cyan, Brown, Empress of Equus. And then we also have Cruiser Development. There exists a need for lighter vessels to screen our more imposing warships. A hoof step above destroyers, cruisers, and battle cruisers provide an invaluable role in engaging and destroying enemy screens, also being, indispo being disposable not to escort civilian ships. The continued improvement is crucial for the control of the Western orders. But I think I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, I think we'll have one more episode in this one, and it, it won't be super long, but it'll be, uh, it'll be good regardless. But if you enjoyed the video, Please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as I guess we'll have to kill off King Sombra. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.